sound quality. Sound quality is going to depend on the mic position and on the gain settings. Now, what I've set up for and what I've been doing so far in this lecture, I've been recording using the microphone on my MacBook Air. And that's not a really bad solution. It'll depend on the acoustics of the environment you're in. But if you're working on acoustics, it's important to make at least a reasonable effort to get the quality level to an appropriate uh, point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back over to where I was before. I'm going to close the doors so we don't hear so much outside noise. There were lovely birds outside the window, but there was also a bunch of traffic noise and the noise level in the room to my ears sitting right here is considerably lower than it was. Next I'm going to switch over from the mic that goes with the MacBook Air that I'm using. And I'm going to switch over to this Yeti Blue mic. So I plug in the Yeti. I've got it sitting right over here, just out of the video frame, so that I can, uh, I can speak to it from a reasonable distance. I've got the gain setting right now is set at a relatively low gain. And I've got the zoom uh, on the automatic gain setting for sound. And that should do a reasonably good job, but you may need to experiment with that. I've placed the Yeti mic and I'm hoping that what I hear on the recording when I'm done is adequate for the objectives. Now we've done surveying of students and we found that they're not looking for absolute professional, fully slick production quality video. And that's a really lucky thing because as instructors, we're going to be hard pressed to deliver that. The people in the ETLT, given a lot of time and, and a lot of effort, can get closer to that than we can. But our target should be to be adequate so that we're not distracting students from having effective learning and a good student experience. Don't make them strain to hear what you're saying. Don't distract them with a mic that's booming unnecessarily. Don't spend too much time trying to optimize uh, the, the quality to get to studio quality, because you're not going to achieve that in your office or in your home. And people will understand. Now, you can do all of this first set up by making a recording of a Zoom meeting on your own without anybody else in the meeting, and then taking that recording, playing it back, doing your own assessment on it to decide if, it, if your configuration is satisfactory. Once you got to that stage, you really need to get some of the people at the uh, teaching and learning team to help you make sure that you're meeting those standards at the student end of the pipeline. Because everything that you've got happening in your home, it's gonna be mediated by Zoom. It's gonna go into the Zoom recording. It's also gonna go out over the network and there will be some degradation, we don't know how much, between your home and where it's received by a student or by somebody who's at the, at the ETLT. So you'll need to get some additional help to do that final tuning. Use their expertise. Get them to give you advice so that you can, with minimum effort, get your output quality up to a level that you can feel proud of. In our next video, we'll set up some feeds and do a test run to bring it all together.